connecting you from RSR Global Limited. Uh, we are based in the UK. Uh, we have the session today, uh, which is uh, the topic. Uh, in the top, uh, topic of in the topic is nursing jobs in the United Kingdom. Uh, this session is divided into four sessions. Uh, the session includes a uh, little bit talk about the company, who we are, what we do. Uh, furthermore, uh, this session uh, will have a panel of three more uh, people on board, uh, including Dr. Divya Prakashji, a consultant doctor uh, based at, uh, in the UK. Uh, there will be a session by him, uh, by Ms. Dipti, uh, who will talk to us on administration. And then uh, last uh, but not least by Dr. Mr. Selendra Mishraji, uh, who will talk to us on table and ticketing and visa procedures. Uh, the session is recorded. And it'll, it's uh, available uh, later on uh, on your WhatsApp groups. And furthermore, it will be posted on social media, including uh, YouTube. Let me talk you through a little bit on RSR Global. RSR Global, uh, we started this company uh, not very long time ago. Uh, me, my name is Rajesh Shrivastav. Uh, my colleague, uh, Rajesh Daktore, who's based in Mumbai, and Mr. Sushil Kataria. We started this organization uh, at the beginning of uh, June 2020. We started the organization with the purpose to work towards be among the leading education and recruitment agency in the healthcare and manpower industry worldwide. Six months down the road, we are in 11 countries and 32 offices. What we do, we identify the most talented applicants and use the expertise and our skills to help in identifying opportunities for them in healthcare industry. We find out who they are, who these people are, where they are based. How can we support them? How can we support them to find them an opportunity in the, in the right industry? Us experts are devoted in providing candidates with the best opportunities to suit their skills and, record, uh, and requirements and provide CV interview and immigration assistance. So that the applicant can meet their objective. Today, uh, I'm going to talk you through a little bit on the company, show you a little bit uh, content on what we are here to offer, who we are, and also introduce you to the team. Uh, let me take this opportunity to share the screen. Uh, RSR Global, this is the company we were talking about. Uh, we are into uh, nursing, uh, providing assistance with people uh, to get opportunities across uh, the world. But today the ob objective is to talk about nursing recruitment in the United Kingdom. You can get on the site. Our website address is rsrglobal.co. You can get ample on information on the company by coming on the site. Let me talk you through a little bit about the nursing recruitment in the UK. Uh, this particular page on the website gives you information on who we are and what we do. We, as mentioned previously, we are in 32 offices across 11 countries. We are working to add additional team members, associates from across the world, and we hope to have over 100 offices by the end of December 2020. The maximum objective is to have 300 offices across the world, which gives an opportunity for people to travel from different parts of the world to come and work in the UK or study in the UK or other destinations. United Kingdom offers one of the strongest uh, healthcare system in the world. Working for National Health Services in the UK offers nursing staff to join a world-class organization which provides high-quality care to patients. It's not uh, getting an employment in NHS. It's not end of story. NHS supports, trains, teaches all the nursing staff to develop the career as they go along. They have a two-way system of working. Not only they appreciate and respect the skills which you bring 
from different parts of the world to come along and work here. At the same time, they also help and train their staff to grow along with the care in the career. The support provided by RSR Global includes uh, job screening, help with IELTS or OAT English examination support, uh, help with computer-based test support, help with document verification, background and healthcare checks, interview screening, visa process support, flight and accommodation booking. The requirements for someone to come to UK to work here in the band five of a national nursing and medical council as a registered nurse, you need to have a BSc nursing degree. We have other uh, ways of coming through as well, which uh, I'm sure at some point in time we will talk about it. They need to have a minimum one year of work experience in the relevant field. And they have to score a certain amount of points in the UK VI academic IELTS examination, which is mentioned above, or in UK VI general IELTS, which gets coupled with OAT grade B. The documents are verified, tested, checked. We provide assistance with healthcare checks in, in different places. The NHS, which is National Health Service in UK, is an absolutely wonderful organization. It's very well funded, supported by the government of Great Britain. I think they get something over 130 billion pounds of support year on year. And they have done a fantastic job over the last nine, 10 months and before, especially during the coronavirus. They have worked extensively. But then NHS uh, is always looking for nursing staff. As of today, they have a requirement of 50,000 nurses to work for them. So hence the reason they look around the world as to, to get the best of the support staff to come and join the team. But they have certain uh, ethics to maintain. They don't pick people from different parts of the world. They say we don't want uh, people to come from nurse, uh, from developing, par uh, developing countries, but there are exceptions. The exceptions are they do take people from India, from Philippines, from China, Singapore, UAE, and multiple other countries where they have some arrangement with them. So there are ways and means. We do, uh, NHS does a very good, uh, they absolute burn on pastoral care. They provide support when somebody comes here. We do provide as well a little bit of support uh, to assist somebody who comes for the first time to UK to settle down. The website on rsrglobal.co talks about nursing and midwifery council registration process. You can click on the site here. It talks about ILTS. It talks about OAT examination. It talks about right of abode education, practice, and registration, and also on visa. So any of the sites you can click on and you can get necessary information. Let me take through one of the pages. An NMC registration process is mentioned here, and it talks about uh, what kind of uh, vacancies we are looking at in terms of nurses, midwives, or specialist community, uh, public health nurses. And then the further splitting of the kind of nurses, adult nurses, mental health, learning, or children nurses. So there are process. The application forms are all available on site. You can click on this, and you can get necessary information. We have people across uh, different parts of the world who can help you, assist you with all the necessary information. So we have ample information available on the website for anybody who's interested to come and join us, talk to us, write to us and we are there to support you. It also talks about different faces, structure and everything else. If you have a question, simply click on register with RSR Global today and we'll provide information. Now RSR Global not only supports you in terms of uh, what we are and how we are, we are very well backed up and supported by a massive team of people who are involved directly or indirectly uh, in different parts of the world and different organization. You'd be surprised. As of today, RSR Global has a team of 1,400 people who are working together. And they're all brilliant people, brilliant people who are there. They all have the same objective to help you all travel abroad and be a part of a wonderful, fantastic organization called National Health Services. We are supported by British Council. We provide insurance. We help you to get a loan if you need to travel abroad. We have an association with an organization called Learn Care India, which provides simulation-based training. We have a ticketing and visa partners. We have IT partners. We have uh, other teams which are working along with us simultaneously. So this is what all about an, uh, RSR Global. 
Now, today, who we are, what we are, and what we're going to do. We have an agenda today. The agenda includes talking about NHS. And uh, I am supported and helped today by Dr. Divya Prakash, who is a consultant for RSR Global NHS Advisory Team. We have Ms. Dipti Prasad, who is Associate Director for RSR Global Kent. She will talk you through on administration. Dr. Saab will talk to us on clinical aspect of uh, NHS. And then we also have Mr. Salinder Mishraji, who is going to talk us through on travel and visa. He's also a director of RSI Global New Delhi and also the owner of Shan World Travels. Dr. Divya Prakash is a senior consultant, orthopedic surgeon, and a lower limb specialist. His special interest deals, is dealing with sports injuries. And he's, in, he's one of the leaders in the field of joint preservation surgery, including cartridge transplant and partial knee replacement. He is well-known, very well renowned gentleman. Uh, he's been uh, in the UK for over 30 years. And he has pre done multiple uh, presentations at national and international level and always uh, involved in research and developing new fields of improvement and treatment. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Devi Prakash ji, he is the national lead for coding uh, and represents BASC and EWG, Expert Working Group. He is a faculty member and examiner for the Royal College of Surgeons and honorary senior lecturer at Birmingham and Ashton University. He is also the medical director for Woodchester Cricket Club and honorary surgeon for Warwickshire County Cr Cricket Club. So anybody who's interested uh, more, he knows what he, he has been doing and has an absolutely gem of a person. We also joined together today by Ms. Deepti Prasad. Uh, she has been in healthcare and, hospi and hospital management. She has done a course from Calcutta. And uh, she has worked for National Health Service England for 12 years in administration. Prior to that, she has worked at Apollo Hospital Ranchi and in the health center in Toronto, Canada, again in administration. She looks after RSR Global Kent, which is near London. We also joined together by Mr. Shalender Mishra, who is Associate Director of RSR Global New Delhi and owner of Sean World Travels New Delhi. With over 40 years of a combined experience in travel and tourism sector, Sean World Travel is a one-stop solution for all your travel needs. So he will talk you through on, on, on ticketing and visa. So we have a multiple area of uh, people who are here today. Uh, I will uh, pass the opportunity without taking any further ado to Ms. Deepti Prasad, who would like to talk to us on administration. She will give us a bit of talk. We will have a few question and answer session, followed by uh, Dr. Divya Prakash ji, who will talk to us on clinical aspect, and then followed by Selendra Mishra ji, who will talk to us on ticketing and visa. So just be ready with questions. You can put together your questions through chat line, and I'll be a point of modulation to talk you through. So without uh, uh, holding any further, I would like to pass on to Deepti Prashad ji. Um, uh, Madam, uh, would you like to take over, please? Yeah. Thank you, Rajesh, for introducing me. Uh, so having uh, spent more than 15 years in hospital sector in India, Canada, and UK, I have particularly enjoyed working for NHS England because it provides fantastic working atmosphere, training support, and it offers flexible working pattern to balance work and home, which is very helpful for anyone uh, coming here with family and children. I'll just uh, share the screen and run through the key highlights of working in NHS to give you a better insight how things work here on the administration side. Just bear with me for a minute. All right, I hope everyone can see the screen. Um, yes. All right, so uh, I'll start with uh, talking about a guaranteed long-term contract, which you have when you start working with NHS here. You initially have a three-year contract. That means you come here with a three-year sponsored visa, which is tier two visa. And these contracts of, often get renewed. And there are so many nurses who work here for decades. On this particular point, I would like to uh, uh, mention a very important point, which is that any family member who accompany the nurse is in, uh, has the right to work in any capacity here and also entitled for a free medical treatment for the family and free schooling for the children, which is such a big relief and <laughs> such a cost saver for person working here. So that is 
the first point i'll come back to uh, number 2 which is manageable working hours so nhs has a standard working week of 5 days of 37.5 hours which gives you a lot of scope for a healthy work life balance and also for the nurses who are keen to earn more and spend time more there is a lot of pay enhancement enhancement so if you work on a bank holiday and uh, sunday say you get 60% more um money and if you work on night shift or saturdays you paid you get 30% more so um, that is about uh, the working hours trend um I'll just come down just for a second one second i'm just trying to call down one second Yeah thirdly I'll uh, talk about the impressive uh, salary package so when you come here as a nurse you are recruited on a band 5 nurse which the salary ranges between 24000 to 30000 and it also depends on where you are working suppose you are working in london then you get extra uh, like no uh, cost uh, traveling cost allowance and other things and when you notice this chart which is over there even if you while you are recruited for band 5 as year passes your salary keeps increasing in the same band so you see that there's always monetary benefit as you are uh, working in the same band as well uh, then nhs uh, provides some of the best paid holidays of any career in uk uh, uh, when you start you get 27 paid uh, holidays and when you complete 5 years then it goes on to 29 days and when you complete around 10 years you get 33 days that also and then you add extra eight bank holidays so for all in all like suppose when you're starting you'll have 35 paid days every year which makes it seven week in total which gives you a lot of uh, time to explore have a good work life balance here um what is another unique uh, thing about working for nhs is that you get uh, paid training for two part competency test and the first part is the cbt test which you take uh, uh, in your home country before coming to uk and the second part is the oski exam which you need to sit in uk and again both the tests are uh, funded by most of the nhs trust here the there are many other facilities which come along with the um, uh, working for nhs uh, one of them is like you no know, you get a free accommodation um at least four weeks uh, of free accommodation there are many nhs trust which gives you more more and more um weeks as well and so this gives you enough time to familiarize yourself with the area and find the right place to live and other benefits also include like you know uh, nhs refunds the visa cost so although you pay for your visa cost but when you come here it gets refunded by the nhs trust many of the nhs trust also um pay for a uh, refund the your english language test uh, that is ielts or eet so there's a lot of uh, uh, monetary refund um, available via nhs one of the other key um, uh, benefits is that they give you a free flight to uk so although you pay for your uk flights when you come to um, england they refund you that money and in case if you have any problems with the fund we have partnered with hdfc credila who can give you loan and to bear the cost of the tickets and which can get refunded by the nhs client now nhs is known for a very good induction program they take very good care of you you have mentors they take care like you no know, they do a lot of uh, induction programs familiarizing you with the local jargon used the what are the nhs values and also uh, when you start here um, you start your career in a ward but there are a lot of career progression opportunities where wherein suppose if you worked in itu before you get promoted from ward to theater so there's a lot of career progression opportunities as well another unique thing about working in nhs is its secure uh, pension scheme uh, it is pro- protected mm-hmm. against mm-hmm. inflation and mm-hmm. and guaranteed by the government so and it's usually 7.1 to 9.3% which uh, gives you a very good pot for a healthy and vibrant retirement 
Next, I would like to talk about the like you know, your transition. Uh, so both the NHS client as well as RL RSR Global goes out of the way to make your transition very smooth. So before you're even coming, like we, you can join our private Facebook groups to connect with other overseas nurses going through the same process as you. And when you actually make the journey and we meet you at the airport, we arrange your first day transport, we make you familiar with your new place of work. So these things are very reassuring for anybody coming to a new country. Uh, again, having said that, there are also few many essentials provided, like, you know, first day providing your lunch, covering your dinner, looking into your basic grocery, giving you a calling card and things like, you no know, bedding and other things. So these are things give you a very good head start when you come here. Um, in nutshell, I'll just like to pinpoint and let you go through this uh, slide, which mentions about like, you no know, things um, to expect, like now the process from arriving in UK, UK to settling down. It incorporates everything from pastoral, professional and relocation packages. So when you're coming here, they will, you'll get a welcome. Before you're coming here, you'll get a welcome letter. There'll be information pack, which will familiarize you with everything which you, you should be knowing. And on your arrival, you meet recruits at the airport. There's a welcome pack. You're connected recruits with, uh, you connect recruits with local communities and existing staff network. And then uh, we uh, like uh, the net trust help you with a bank account opening. They'll familiarize you with local tours, including a visit to supermarkets and providing you prepaid travel cards, etc. And uh, in, um, NHS is known for a very good induction program. They have, like they have a corporate induction. You have a mentor who would uh, talk you through and support you, and they would provide specific training for your OSCE exam, which you need to pass. So these are, and just lastly, just want to conclude with the thing that uh, for the visa again, you'll be um, given a, like you, a certificate of sponsorship to the overseas nurses is provided by the NHS. And you apply for a UK visas in immigration for a visa as a skilled migrant worked under tier two. Um, that's all from my side, uh, from the administration side. Please feel free to ask any questions and I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Hello, ma'am. Uh, myself, uh, Prasenjit, just wanted to Hello, ask you. Uh, uh, when we approach, uh, sorry, my question is wrong or right, I don't know. Uh, if I, if we approach the marketing, I mean, who are interested to go to, in the company to the UK, so they can go directly and do the RSR Global, right? Or they yeah. will come through. This I'm in Calcutta. Suppose okay. I have a campaigning with a lot of Nazis along with me, campaigning. Uh, how they do, they come to me or how I know, I mean, I have to collect the data and all. Uh, I would like to answer this, uh, Mr. Prasenjit. Thank you for raising yeah. this point. Uh, we have uh, multiple offices across India at the moment. And if we do a campaign, uh, if you come on board as a part of the team, we will explain, teach and train you uh, how to take the right information. Uh, this information are all shared with you and we will uh, spend substantial amount of time to explain you to the light nitties and gritties. Our objective is to make sure that people who are traveling uh, from India or any part of the India to come to UK uh, or any other destinations, uh, they are well informed and well guided and coached. So that is the main objective on uh, this point. Uh, there are multiple questions coming out, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Deepthi Ji, which yeah. I would like to call you together and put it together. But yeah, considering sure. the fact uh, that there are uh, uh, time constraints, uh, if it's okay with everybody, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Divya Prakash Ji to come on board and talk to us on the clinical part of uh, NHS recruitment. Uh, may I request all to uh, kindly mute your... Uh, uh, your phones and uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Divya Prakaji to come on board and uh, talk us through and talk us through a little bit about NHS recruitment sir. Uh, in the end of the session we will take all the questions. Thank you Dr. Sir. Um, Rajesh thank you very much for inviting me onto this one. Um, the introduction was excellent 
But before I proceed, uh, I would like to say that uh, I've been very impressed with the speed at which you have established the RSR Global. And it is actually amazing the kind of uh, profile that you've already generated within a few short months. Um, Dipti, you've made my life very easy by doing uh, most of the talking which I was going to cover, but I'll just add a little bit on top of that. So um, if I'm allowed to share my screen, can you guys see this? Yes, sir. Okay, brilliant. <clears throat> so as uh, Rajesh has told you, um, I'm an orthopedic consultant and I came to UK uh, in the early 1990s. And um, I'll tell you what my first exposure and experience was regarding uh, the quality of nurses uh, that we have over here in UK. Uh, I remember I had gone for a ward round as a junior doctor. I, I started at um, uh, in a hospital in London called Mount Vernon. And um, I went for a ward round with my consultant and we were there as a team and we were stopped at the beginning, uh, at the entry point of uh, the ward by a nurse. And she said, uh, Mr. Phillips, would you mind waiting for a few minutes? I'm just tidying up a patient. And my consultant, Mr. Phillips, he stopped, he waited and he waited courteously while the nurse finished off doing whatever she was doing with the patient. And then she came out and said, uh, Ms. Phillips, now you can come in. It was absolutely astounding. I mean, I could not imagine that in India, a nurse would be able to tell a consultant, a senior consultant to stop and he would listen to her. So what this gave me was the insight into the way the nurses were respected and treated. And it has not changed. It has continued. And believe me, even now when I go to the ward and if a nurse tells me to do something, sometimes I forget to roll up my sleeves. You know, we are going through the phase where we all have got to be a bear below the elbow and I forget to uh, roll up my sleeves or forget to take off my watch. A nurse will just look at me and wag a finger and I've got to listen. So the nurses are really respected over here. Just to give you a bit of a insight into where I work, this is the hospital that I'm working. It's in Birmingham. Um, the way the hospital structure is in UK is that... Um, there can be different hospitals that come together under one umbrella and then it becomes one trust. So, for example, in Birmingham, there are about eight hospitals, eight well-established proper hospitals, but there are only two trusts. And one of the trusts is mine where I work at Sandville, and this is the flagship uh, hospital. Um, we've got a very thriving orthopedics department. Um, this hospital is going through a bit of transition. Um, this is the present uh, spread, as you can see. I mean, it's massive and it's well laid out. Um, it's probably much bigger in structure than most of the hospitals that you see in India. But we are now moving to a new site. And this is going to be our new hospital. It's still going to be in Birmingham. And um, the artist's impression is this. Um, which is very impressive. Um, I'd love to be working over there. But um, we still have got a little bit of time. It is meant to open in March 2022. So we've got about another 15, 16 months before we can get into the new hospital. Now, coming to the nursing um, recruitment and why are we talking about nursing? Um, I mean, if you look at this uh, paper that came out from the Royal College of Nursing, and this is in UK. And there was going to be a debate in the Westminster Hall, and this is dated the 3rd of March, 2020. The key statistics that they were talking about was 40,000 nursing vacancies. So what Rajesh was saying about 50,000 was actually not a joke, because in March, before COVID, 3rd of March was before the COVID lockdown started in UK. There were 40,000 vacancies in the nursing um, department. And um, with the COVID uh, pandemic, it has actually got worse and the requirement has increased. So this is just to give you real statistical published data about the requirement. 
And um, this is BBC News, and this is from 7th November, so earlier this month. And they are saying that with the COVID-19, there is going to be further nursing shortage because in winter in UK, um, we do have uh, a lot of hospital admissions related to flu and other conditions that get aggravated um, during the winter months. So this is the right time. If you are interested in coming to UK, this is the right time for you to start making your moves and getting all the paperwork in order because this is a golden opportunity. And um, this is another uh, topic that Rajesh ji uh, mentioned briefly. This is again published data from 22nd September. 2020, and the CNO announced that uh, there was an additional 28 million uh, pounds that were started for nurse recruitment. So you can see it's huge, it's real, and it is present at the moment. So the time for you to start applying is now. And, and just to give you some more flavor of um, other hospitals, you know, this is an advertisement from Cambridge University Hospitals. Okay, and look what's over here. The second one at the top is recruitment, current vacancies, and they're talking about nursing and midwifery. And right at the bottom, you can see that they're talking specifically about overseas recruitment and welcoming applications from overseas and from everywhere else. So you guys are in the right place because the NHS England is actually looking at you and they want people from India. Um, from the same uh, uh, website, I took out another one, and this is uh, Cambridge University Hospitals, and this is talking about Band 5, which Rajeshi and both uh, Rajesh and Dipti were talking about, and the application is still open. The applications close on the 3rd of the 12th, 2020, and the salary structure you can see, which Dipti was also talking about was, Again, just under 25,000 pounds to uh, 30,600 per annum. Okay, so this is just substantiating what they have been saying. Another one, uh, this is from the Royal Surrey NHS Foundation. And very interestingly, you can see that they're talking about international and overseas nurses, and they've put pictures of um, a couple of Filipino nurses. The first line over here, it says, if you're a qualified nurse, but don't have an NMC registration to work in the UK, here at Royal Surrey, we offer an excellent structured onboarding program with an attractive relocation, blah, 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 and it goes on. So they are actually going to stretch themselves, extend their arms and invite people, nurses from overseas. India is a very big play field for them and you are in the right place. Um, and just to give you another idea about the proportion of foreign trained nurses, so if you think that you're going to be alone over here and there might be just a handful of nurses from India and you'll feel isolated, then please don't worry. Um, you can see statistically that UK is the fourth worldwide in nurses which have been trained overseas. So, I could have brought uh, on board a couple of my um, nurses who've been either trained in Philippines or India or some other countries, and they could have uh, spoken to you, to you about their personal experiences, but we can all do that later on. I'm not here to try and convince you of anything. I'm just here to give you the information and to let you know that there is a requirement in UK, there is funding available, and the requirement is now. And there are hospitals that are going to go out of the ways and help you. And uh, RSR Global is actually doing a very, very fine job. And they are actually making life much easier. So if you've got the right qualifications and if you think that you want to make a career in UK where you get the money, you get the lifestyle, which Dipti was talking about, and you get the respect, which I'm afraid to say that many times you don't in India, then this is the time to approach RSR Global, and I'll take um, the questions later on. Thank you. Dr. Saab, thank you very much. An absolutely wonderful and a very good presentation on uh, the various uh, 
aspects of national health services in the UK and the requirements. So as uh, Dr. Devi Prakashji was talking about, uh, the vacancies are real, they're live. Uh, we are uh, not very far from uh, the demand of supply. Uh, we are there to assist everybody wherever we have offices. Even if we don't have offices, we have uh, contacts. Uh, you can talk to us, you can write to us, email us uh, or call us, and we will provide you all support uh, all our vacancies will go live on RSR Global website in, uh, in the next two weeks or so. And you can see multiple opportunities coming out for people to come abroad and work here in a fantastic organization called National Health Services in the UK. I will bring the questions which we are raising up now at the moment. But at the same time, I would like, uh, because of the time constraint, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Shalender Mishraji. Uh, Mr. Shalender Mishra uh, is uh, SEO Director for RSR Global, New Delhi, and he's also owner of a company called Shan World Travels in New Delhi. Uh, his office is uh, based in Cannot Place, and uh, he would just like to talk us a little bit on ticketing and visa. Followed by that, I have some questions which I will put in front of uh, Dr. Saab Deepthi Ji and Shalender Ji. Mr. Mishra, over to you, sir. Mr. Mishra? He's on mute. Sorry. Can you hear? Uh, yes, Mr. Mishra. We oh, are there, sorry. sir. Yes. I'll pass it on to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rajesh ji. And thank you, Dr. Saab and Dipti ji. Already you have given a lot of information. Rajesh has already said so many times about me and my company. We are a 20-year-old company. We are in this profession of uh, travel agency. Uh, since 2000 and our company name is Shan World Travel. El My name is Shailendra Mishra and we are located in central business district of New Delhi, Connaught Place. And our primary job is outbound travel. So our expertise is, uh, is in outbound travel means the Indian traveler traveling abroad. So therefore, the, our strength lies in sending people abroad and foreign travel. So it will be very helpful for all of you to use our services for visa, for ticketing. And in visa also, since we are located in Delhi, uh, most of the embassies are close by. And we have sent so many tourists to UK and Europe and to America and all, all the big countries. So we know how to process the visa. And our client base is also a multi-level multi marketing people and large associations. So we know how to deal with the various individuals. And along with me, we have a team who does the visa job. So um, I can assure you that we'll give you a good service and at a nominal rate. And our, uh, our services are available worldwide because we are IATA accredited agency. So even if the people are not, uh, including India and abroad, if anyone from uh, overseas also wants to travel to UK or vice versa, that also we can do. So uh, as regard to the service, I can assure you we'll be doing a good job. Along with me, I have my senior colleague, Anil. Anil can raise his hand. So he's with me. He will be uh, also assisting me or rather he will be directly dealing with all the clients for doing all, uh, um, uh, taking care of every requirement. So you can be rest assured that uh, we'll give good service. Thank you. If you want any question, you can let me know. Rajesh. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mishra. It's been absolutely wonderful, sir. Uh, we are getting some questions coming through to us on chat line and then obviously been sent to us previously. So I would like to take them one by one uh, and uh, you can decide who would like to answer this thing. The One of the first questions which has come through from uh, Prasunjit Kanjila, uh, Kanjila uh, who is asking uh, the required qualification to join NHS nurse. Uh, would you, Deepthi Ji, would you like to answer on this, madam? You are. You need to unmute, madam. You need to unmute. Yes, thank you, Rajesh. Uh, yes, yeah, so the, uh, there are very clear-cut eligibility criteria to apply for NHS. Firstly, is with regards to your qualification. So you need to have a BSc nursing certificate. 
uh, there are uh, like you no know, queries about diploma which we will answer in eventually like you know there is like so there are possibilities of coming if you don't hold bsc in nursing but uh, we'll let you know in due course now with the relevant work experience you need to have one year in relevant role in last 5 years so that is comes as a work experience criteria uh, with regards to your skills uh, as mentioned on the rsr global website very clearly and uh, nicely it says that yeah, you need to pass ielts uk vi academy and your listening reading speaking should be 7 and writing should be 6.5 and if you are giving ielts uh, ukvi general then your score should be 4 along with oet grade which is grade b i thank hope you, that ma'am. answers your query thank, thank you, you very much uh, prashanjit ji i have another question yeah. which has come through uh, from uh, mr samit tijore and uh, mr samit tijore is asking dr saab one question can a nurse who has clinical experience but not into non clinical role qualify for the application Dr. Devi Prakash ji. Uh, thank you very much. Um, can I just understand this clearly? So, when you say that a nurse is in a non-clinical role, what exactly do you mean by that? Can you expand uh, on? Uh, uh, Samir, Samir, Samir would you like to come on board and ask the question directly? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good evening, everyone. So, basically, what if somebody is into, uh, uh, say, like a materials manager, or somebody is moved into? Uh, like you know, the administrative role, and uh, not per se like you know in the theatre or not in the, the physician's office. So, um, how about or or maybe a sabbatical, like you know. So, on your experience uh, over the past how many years? This is what my question would be. Okay, um, that's a very good one actually because uh, that uh, takes me over to what uh, Dikti was saying earlier on about um, you know career progression. The first thing you've got to remember, Samir. is that uh, the jobs that are being advertised are for clinical nursing roles okay it's as simple as that so if a person has uh, done a nursing degree and has got all the right qualifications that person may have been doing whatever else that they would have been doing in other countries when they come to uk the first thing that they've got to do is establish themselves as nurses okay there are requirements and vacancies um for other jobs as well i mean if uh, you went back to my presentation and um, if you saw the banner of uh, the cambridge university it was not just midwifery and nursing that they were advertising for jobs but there were other areas that they would so yes there are vacancies but what we are going to talk about here is very specifically whatever role the nurse would have been doing um before coming to uk that is just by the by that is an experience that will come in handy later on but when they come over here they are expected to work as band 5 nurses coming to career progression um the matron of this hospital she sits at the same level um as the surgical director and the surgical director is overall in charge of all the surgical specialties and takes uh, makes decisions and takes uh, actions on everything that is related to surgery but the matron is at the same level so if a person a nurse has gone into administrative role there is still plenty of progression opportunities and that will come later one thing i forgot to mention during my talk rajesh and samit also was that when nurses come over here they don't come here over here for 3 years in my experience i have not known a single nurse to go back to their own home country every nurse that comes over here settles down over here there must be ex- exceptions i'm sure but i'm not aware of any and the reason why they settle down is not because somebody is forcing them to settle down over here but because they find the environment the pay structure the career progression and the respect that they get you know everything the whole package is so attractive that they want to come over here so samit coming back to what you were saying yes if a person wants to make further career in a non clinical side there are opportunities but that comes later thank you very much dr saab there's a two yes. question which has come through uh, on the next level and uh, dr saab if you like to answer or dipti ji uh, they are asking what is band 5 
Uh, I'll let Ditti answer that one. Okay, thank you. So NHS uh, pay structure works on a banning system, like uh, like uh, for any administrator, they also have similar ban structure. That like when you're working as in initial days, you work as bantry, so you have ban structure. What these ban structure do is give you a range. Uh, so when we are talking of band five nurses, it ranges between twenty four thousand nine hundred seven pounds to thirty thousand six hundred fifteen pounds. This band uh, also is based on uh, like uh, whether you're living in London and we when you need extra allowance for traveling uh, to London or whether uh, what how many years you have spent uh, working. So uh, like suppose if you start with the band five and if you have worked one year, you start with 24,907. But as you have spent uh, three, four years, even you are still with the band five with the same role, your um, salary increases to 27,416. And if it's more than seven years, it increases to 30,600. So this is what the banding does. Like you uh, apply for a particular role, which is under a band. And under that particular band also, you have a, uh, um, monetary gains uh, as each year passes. That's very good. Uh, can, uh, can I add a little bit to that? Mm -hmm. So, um, I think uh, that was very clear, clear about the salary. But I think what uh, people need to understand is band five is a fully qualified general nurse. Okay, so you're not expected to be in any specialist role. The reason is that, you know, when nurses come from overseas, they can show lots of certificates uh, to say that they have done this, that or the other, and they may not be able to deliver. So band five gives them the platform to start. And after that, if they're able to show that they have got the competencies and the qualifications, then they progress to more specialist roles. They could be senior surgical nurses, they could be ITU nurses, it could be a cath lab nurses, you know, whatever. But band five basically means that you're a general, it's like a general practitioner equivalent um, if you talk about doctors. Um, so you're a general fully qualified nurse with the responsibilities. That's very kind of you, Dr. Saab. Uh, there are two questions, which two prompt question. Uh, one question goes to Mr. Shalindraji, and the other question comes to uh, Dr. Saab. Uh, first question, which goes to Dr. Saab, is uh, apologies. Uh, the, is there a minimum or maximum age for any male or female nurse requirement in NHS? Which goes to uh, Deepthi Ji or Dr. Saab. And second one, which goes to Sarendra Mishra Ji. Uh, which he would like to answer, if you can, sir. The steps or requirements of a visa time taken, the price or personal presence and everything else. So he's talking about visa requirement, Mishraji. So I would like to invite uh, Dr. Saab or uh, Dipti Ji to first answer the minimum maximum age and followed by the answer on the visa requirements. Yeah. Dipti, you go first. Yeah, I'm not aware of any age thing. All I'm aware is the elig eligibility criteria, which is quite well laid out on qualification, relevant work experience or skills. So if you know anything specific about age, kindly uh, let us know as well. Um, as far as the age is concerned, there has got to be um, a minimum and a maximum. Uh, you cannot have a 14-year-old uh, claiming to be a band five nurse, you know, for example. So the minimum doesn't really come into picture. Anybody who's done graduation would be an adult and that is what is required. So minimum is, no, is not required. And equally, the person should not have hit the retirement age. So at the moment, the retirement age is 65 in UK. As long as the person is under that, Preferably, I would think uh, under 60, but that's not the legal requirement. Preferably because whenever a nurse is interviewed by any NHS employer, they are going to look at the potential of the nurse working long time. So I would say age is not an issue as long as the person has not hit the retirement age. Very kind of you, Dr. Saab. Uh, Mr. Mishra, would you like to talk you through about visa, sir? Yes. You see, in this case, since it is a job visa, please understand. So in job visa, the most crucial, important document will be the appointment letter given by uh, the employer. And of course, the employment letter, when employer will give, he will definitely take care of his qualification, his experience, his eligibility, and all those things. So I don't see there will be any problem once a candidate has an appointment letter. 
Of course, it will be supported by his qualification when it is submitted. Of course, the counselor will like to check further again that whether it is a genuine candidate or somebody is trying to do some kind of a mischief. So the personal interview will definitely take place and, and there will be a documentation and documentation will be with the qualification, then the past experience, and of course the interview was assessment and the appointment letter, and it will be submitted. We'll have a appointment taken with the uh, counselor uh, embassy, and then application will be submitted. If they ask for the interview, then interview will take place, otherwise visa will be granted. Uh, my personal opinion is that once the appointment letter is given, the visa will not be a problem. It will be almost 100%. That's very kind of that's very kind of Mr. Mishra. Uh, Deepthi ji, there's another question which has come through, which is a uh, two prompt question. IELTS academic uh, is not enough. So why only UK via IELTS? Second question is, uh, if someone does IELTS academic uh, general, then why they have to take OAT as well? So I, I think a little bit of uh, uh, help is needed on this front as well. All right. Uh, this is something like, no, these are the basic skill criteria which I know of. But to go into the specifics of why it is in particular, I'll have to get back to you, uh, like, no, uh, after, uh, like, no, um, finding it out more. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deepthi ji. Uh, Dr. Saab, there's one more question. I think it's a repeat of the previous question by Dr. Tijore. It says, uh, can a PG graduated nurse with non-clinical experience teaching apply for any related clinical or non-clinical role? This has come from Dr. Khan. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, pretty much a repetition of uh, what uh, Dr. Tijore was asking. Um, the bottom line is that... Uh, if a person has qualified as a nurse and has got no experience of nursing, then how are they going to handle the situation in UK? I mean, it's a question that has, that's got to be answered, first of all, by the applicant. If they have got the experience, but they have deviated and gone into another field, then that's a different matter, because that would mean that they not only have the qualification, but they've also got the basic skills. So if they have done at least one year of nursing, in clinical settings and then gone somewhere else and it doesn't matter they can still apply that's very kind of you thank you very much sir uh, question from Shilp uh, shilpa shri narayanan uh, she wants to know do you consider students uh, nurses home country experience uh, uh, shilpa shri would you like to elaborate more on this question please ma'am Ms. Silpa Shri Narayanan, would you like to ask this question directly? Do she asks what she wants to know? Is, uh, yes, madam, go in for that. Yeah, I just want to know if they have experience of 10 years or seven years, something like that. Uh, do they consider that experience as a like uh, for uh, salary wise or uh, whether the those experience in which department they have, would they consider for that department itself, something like that? Can I take that one, Rajeshi? Uh, didn't uh, get very clear. She, what she wants to know, do they consider yes. nurses home country experience? Yes, sir, Dr. Sir, for you, please. Yeah. Uh, Shilpa Shri, um, very yeah. good question again. Um, but what I've said before is still holding true. The first thing that the nurses will be doing will be working as a general band five nurse. Okay. And after that, they've got to show that they have got expertise and experience in other fields. And then it's an open play field. I have uh, known nurses to progress very rapidly because of their previous experiences in their home country. They don't have to acquire all the experiences and expertise in UK. I think that's what you wanted to know, didn't you? No. Yeah, uh, uh, in the sense, if a person has a pediatric experience, pediatric department experience, would they consider that? Like, uh, um, probably they might not put them in uh, the other department where she don't have any experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so as long as okay. they've got, you see, uh, the NHS employers, the nursing director, they will look at the application and also look at the qualification of the person applying. And if they see that there is uh, expertise on a pediatric ward, for example, then they're not going to put you in, an, in a geriatric ward. They are going to okay. take that into account and put you, 
the person in a pediatric ward. So yes, but if you're talking about, for example, as an ITU nurse, which is a highly specialized area, or a, a operative theater in a transplant unit, then no, you may have that experience from your home country, but please just understand that to start off, you will be working as a general nurse. It could be in the operating theaters if you're a transplant nurse, for example, but you will not get to the senior level uh, unless you've shown your competitions after coming over here. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sir. Uh, two questions quickly back to back. Uh, we are coming to the last 10 minutes of a session. So uh, if we are not able to answer any of the questions, please uh, feel free to write to us on contact at rsrglobal.co. You can also contact us by sending messages uh, through Facebook or any other social media. Uh, we have uh, some another set of questions which is coming through. Uh, this goes to Mr. Sharendra Mishra. Uh, and it's come from a gentleman called Mr. Kanjilal, who wants to know the actual cost for all processing fee, including visa fare, flight fare, and everything else. So obviously, he's talking about visa fee and flight tickets. This information, Mr. Prasanjit, is also available on the website. Uh, but I would like to pass on to Mr. Mishra to uh, answer you this question, sir. Well, uh, the visa, you see, when you apply for a visa, there is a visa fee which is paid to the embassy. And there is a fee which I am going to charge you as a service fee. So service charges is fixed. That is 1,000 rupees, which is a very nominal expertise, checking your documents, talking to you, arranging, uh, helping you to see, uh, arrange the documents, things like that. So for that, my office will charge only 1,000 rupees. Rest money is what the counselor is asking for the, as a visa fee, which is listed in this website. If you want to go and see the all type of visa charges are already there. And as regard to the ticket, of course, it is going to depend. It depends on the time of the ticket, the airline, and uh, uh, the, the how advanced we are buying. Of course, we'll try our best to give you the best routing with the lowest price. That already Mr. Rajesh has <laughs> taken promise from me that I have to be <laughs> a very competitive in giving them the ticket price. So you can be rest assured, the best price, best routing, and of course, our service charge as regard to the visa fee is only 1,000 rupees. For ticket, no service charges. Thank you, Thank Mr. You, Mr. Mishra. Thank you. Thank you and very I, much, sir. Very kind of you. A question you, comes to you, uh, Dr. Saab, uh, which comes from uh, Ruzda Munshi. And uh, he wants to know that we provide assistance to the international nurses who are on student visa in the UK, but in the future would like to register for LMC. Uh, he wants to inform that OIT exam for December has been booked in December and he has got nine months of work experience from India, but no experience working in the UK. So basically he wants to uh, come on board and work for NHS and what kind of help we can give them considering the fact they are currently on student visa, but wants to come on board and join NHS under tier two visa. Uh, thank you very much. That's a very good question as well. But before I go there, I'll just um, add something else. Um, something that Rajesh, you said earlier on, which may not have registered. Um, the NHS will actually reimburse uh, the flight ticket. Okay. So, uh, Prasenjit, you were asking about the costs. And uh, Mr. Misha was also talking about the flight prices. Tell the candidate not to worry because whatever is the cost will actually be reimbursed by the NHS. Yes, sir. I have seen. Yeah, I have seen. Yeah. So that's Thank number you. one. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Basically, what two. happened? Sorry. Apologies. Sorry. Go ahead, Dr. Sir. No, you, you carry on first. But, but uh, sir, uh, as, uh, as regard to the flight ticket, even Prasenjit, if the family are traveling or dependents are traveling, you can be benefited working with Sanwal Travel. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> all right. I have got another question here, which is coming through Dr. Saab and apologies for interrupting in the middle. Uh, it's come from Shilpa Shri Narayan and she wants to know a little bit about CBT training. Uh, we will come back to you on this, madam. Uh, we'll uh, give you more information, but uh, sufficient information is available on the website. Please go on to rsrglobal.co on nursing employment and uh, you will find ample information there. But should you have further uh, requirements, please uh, do feel free to contact us and we'll be happy to help you out. Uh, last but not the least, uh, which is coming through, uh, is uh, 
are there any training to nurses possibility of first fresh degree nurse pass out like somebody who has passed out i suppose the basic requirement is one year of relevant experience uh, i'm sure nhs provides one of the finest trainings as well i think uh, dr sabit goes to you if it's okay um yeah thank you i mean i actually didn't get a chance to answer the earlier question about the student visa um the person has got to be a qualified nurse with a one year experience people on student visa without any work experience cannot be helped in the project that uh, rsa global is undertaking so i'm afraid sorry about that one um can you remind me what the second question was rajesh uh this is saying they just want to know what uh, a kind of training is provided to people who come and join nhs or um once you are actually employed by the nhs it is like i said an open playing field you can go for courses for nurses you can uh, go for it courses for nurses you can do lots of things things will improve uh, in terms of your cv so there are lots of options and uh, uh, nhs is actually very proactive in terms of providing help financially giving time off getting patient people logged on for courses so there is a lot of opportunity um hopefully i have answered that one rajesh um, yes sir that's very kind of you thank you very much no, sir just, uh, just going to ask you a question um does rsa global charge any fee to the candidate who go through it no sir it's a zero fee arrangement we are uh, officially we cannot charge a single penny to any of the nurses who are seeking employment in national health service in uk uh and that is uh, in written and the uh, application uh, certifies that and we have uh, uh, agreed with this that no money will be charged and not that any of the officers across uh, wherever sub centers we have will be charging any fee at all uh, am i here can i can i be heard can i hear me sir am i gone out no no you're fine fantastic there's one question i have come through dr saab and which is coming through if a person comes on a tier 2 visa and joins nhs and joins a particular trust can they take a transfer to different trust is that possible um there is no such thing as transfer they they i mean once people come over here they become free birds so yes they will have some commitments to stay with the uh, with the uh, unit that has given them the employment but if after say one year two years they want to go to another hospital all they've got to do is resign from this one and get um, a job at the other trust so you don't have to work on a transfer it's not like uh, the government offices in india where you got to apply for a transfer it's not like that it's uh, it's like a private enterprise you know if in india you work for a private company and you want to jump from one company to another company it is just like that so it's 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 much easier very much easier that's a very kind of you thank you very much uh, i think uh, i will answer the next couple of questions which has come through from shubha minish and from shilpa shri narayanan uh, one question uh, shilpa shri is asked as ilts training also free uh, i think uh, deepthi ji has covered a part of it uh, i ilts training and cbt madam uh, would you like to answer on this please yeah like uh, uh, as i mentioned uh, in my slide uh, sometimes when we uh, have a Uh, like you no know, association with any nhs trust uh, they have a relocation packages so most of the nhs trust offer um, things free uh, ticketing free visa charges and free cbt and uh, oski exam uh, like they refund you for that but some also do it for ielts or um, oet thing so it depends like you no know, which uh, uh, nhs trust we are uh recruiting you for and if they have that relocation packages which most of them do have then it will be free for you as well it will get refunded thank you very much uh, deepthi ji one question has come from shubha minish and that says that is there any changes on salary based on experience in the home country uh, correct me if i'm not wrong i think uh, the minimum is one year experience so there's certain set of salary which is paid but if someone has got multiple years of experience the starting salary is always more than someone who has got the bare minimum one year experience uh, correct me dr sabi if i'm not uh, wrong on this sir um 
this is more in dipti's domain i think my understanding is that when they come over here they do start at band 5 and um, they can always negotiate and uh, go higher yeah yeah i agree so. that uh, because uh, like when you start irrespective of the experience you start as a band 5 nurse but as uh, dr prakash mentioned earlier also there's a very quick career progression if you're holding the right experience and if you show the competence it can just you can write, you can straight away go to different bands as well but starting point is always band 5 when you come uh, and land in this country that's very kind of you dipti ji both of us probably misunderstood that question i think because band 5 has got a range from 24900 to 30000 i think what shiva was trying to ask was can she start at say 30000 yes right. that's what that's the question that's the question sir yeah i okay. think the answer yeah. to that is at the time of the interview you can raise that and most of the nhs hospitals will actually uh, take that into account yeah that's correct yeah i think dr saab thank you very much it's been a pleasure to have dr devi prakash ji the ms dipti prasad and mr shilendra mishra and everybody who has been part of this uh, uh, meeting this morning uh, we are come to uh, uh, coming to an end of the session there are multiple questions still coming through uh, i would request you all to please uh, forward it to contact at rsrglobal.co uh, and anything else feel free to contact our offices all over india we have mr rajesh dakthore social kataria we have offices in sri lanka and ireland you name it we are there uh, you can raise a question with the direct contacts you can find the links to these people you don't even have to uh, go search very far you go on a website look for a particular uh, sca director click on the picture and an email can uh, shoot off to them directly so it's been absolute pleasure thank you uh, for everyone being here today and uh, we would like to come to an end of the session because we are just crossing the time uh, limit of the session and it's been an absolute pleasure uh, thank you all for being here uh, i will uh, like to uh, pass it on to everyone and uh, if you like to have a question the recording will stop now you can still ask a question or two if you like and uh, have a lovely day to you all